Welcome back to my How to Become an ESL Teacher series. This is part two, so if you haven't watched part one, I will link it up here. Go ahead and go and check it out, and so you can be all caught up. This video, I think, is probably what I get the most questions about, so I'm hoping this will help you guys a lot. We're gonna be talking about what ESL course you should take. I understand that it's daunting, because if you just Google search ESL course, there are like a bajillion options and they all cost different things and they all take different amounts of time and they all have different promises and blah, 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 blah. So hopefully in this video, I'm going to lay it out really clear and concise to you. There are basically three styles of ESL courses you can take. And within each of those styles, there are different types of courses. And I'm also gonna kind of break down what type of person would take which course. So think about your motivation for becoming an ESL teacher and most likely you will fit into one of these categories. So I hope this is helpful for you. As always, leave me comments. I love discussing this and let's go. Option number one is a 100% fully online ESL course. This is going to be the least expensive option, but it also presents kind of the most restrictions when, you're, when it comes to getting an actual ESL job. If you go onto ESL job websites, there are going to be a lot of ESL jobs that say, if you did an online course, don't even bother applying. And the reason is, is because they want to know that you have experience in the classroom. Not only is that good for them, but it's also good for you. Because if you did a completely online course and then you get put in a classroom and you find out that you have stage fright, that's like, bye teacher, why did you even bother? So I understand where that's coming from. This kind of course, since it is 100% online, you're going to have an online instructor and there will probably be other online ESL candidates. You're just gonna do all your, your work, your assignments, your discussions online through an online forum. So since this can potentially be kind of restrictive, this kind of course is really good for someone who's either on a tight budget or maybe there's someone who is you know, you're, you just finished high school and you're gonna take a gap year between high school and college, or maybe you just finished college and you're gonna take a gap year between like finishing college and going to work and you don't really, really care about the type of job or how much money you're gonna make. You're mostly just wanting to become an ESL teacher for the travel experience and maybe to make a little bit of change along the way to kind of help you fund your travels. You can still work in some really exciting places and don't get me wrong, you could probably have some really, really cool jobs, but they're not gonna be the most lucrative jobs, most likely, and you might be a little bit limited into the location that you can go and teach. Option number two is a partially online and partially in-class course. This is going to be a huge leap between the all online and the half and half because this opens a lot more doors job-wise. So most likely you would be doing a lot of online coursework throughout the week and then maybe on the weekends you would go, you would meet with your instructor, meet with the other ESL candidates and actually teach real people in a real classroom. This is really, really good for you as a teacher because you get to practice things that you're learning in the course and you get to ask a lot of questions. And it also kind of shows you if you like teaching people. It's kind of a good thing to know before jumping into this. This is going to up the price because you're obviously in person and you have an instructor. This kind of course is good for someone who maybe has a really specific country in mind, like they really wanna to go to Japan or they really wanna teach in Thailand. This gives you more options and more likelihood that you can actually teach where you want to. Also, it's good for someone who wants to make a little bit more money. This is good for someone who wants to, maybe right out of college, they wanna travel for a full year or maybe they wanna travel for two years or three years, and they don't wanna make ESL like their career, but it's a really good stepping stone, it looks really good on CVs, all that kind of stuff. It gives you an opportunity to travel and make money and build your resume. And finally, option three, which this is definitely what I recommend, and this is what I did, and that is doing a 100% in-class live course. Yes, this does knock up the price quite a bit, but it makes you the best teacher that you can possibly be. All of your coursework is gonna be like 
lecture from your instructor where you can ask questions, you can discuss with the other candidates, and then you actually get to practice what you discussed in class with students. And then you can ask questions real time, like, how should I have handled that? Did this person handle this correctly? What would we do if this happened? It's just, it makes you an all around better teacher. I had no experience whatsoever teaching before I took my ESL course and I felt extremely prepared and I still use what I learned to this day. There's a couple different options that you can do. You can do this domestically or internationally. You can do it domestically. You can take the course in your home country. That's what I did. I took my ESL course in America and then I got a job and moved abroad. Or you can go through a company. There's quite a few companies out there that do this. They bring you to whatever country, Germany or Cambodia or China, and you actually do the course in that country for about the first month. And then usually they guarantee you a job right after. These most likely aren't going to be the best ESL jobs in the whole world, but it's also your first ESL job, so don't worry about it too much. You can always get a better one later. This is really good for someone who's maybe kind of nervous about moving abroad, especially all by yourself. If you do this type of course, then you get to move abroad with other newbies to that country. You're all taking the course together. You're most likely gonna be living very close to each other or maybe together. And you're doing this immersive new country all together. And then you're kind of already used to the country by the time your job has begun. A fully in class course is gonna be for someone who is interested in making this their career. Maybe they want to be an ESL teacher and work abroad for the rest of their life. Or maybe they have their degree in education and they want to focus on ESL so they're going to get an ESL certificate. Or maybe they're interested in becoming a teacher and they don't really know what direction so rather than going and getting their bachelor's in education, this is a good way to take a step forward. These courses are on the more expensive side. You really, really are investing in your future, but that is not a bad thing. The absolute top two ESL courses you can possibly take is either the Trinity TESOL or the Cambridge CELTA. Those two courses are world renowned. Everyone knows who they are, what they are, and they basically get your resume to the top of the stack. However, these are very expensive courses. I took the Cambridge CELTA and I believe it was around 2000 US dollars when I took it. So it's a big chunk of change. You're really investing in your future if you go for that. Between the Trinity and the CELTA, they are really neck and neck, really, really good. I would say the Cambridge CELTA is probably just a little bit higher in just kind of the worldwide renown for it. A lot of ESL job descriptions will mention having a CELTA or they'll just expect it. I'm not just saying that because I took Cambridge CELTA but it is like kind of the gold standard of all ESL courses. These kind of courses are going to allow you to have the best of the best jobs you can get with an ESL certificate. If you're looking into the Cambridge CELTA or the Trinity, those are really gonna be for people that want to make this their career because they are expensive, but they're really, really, really good. As I said before, I had no teaching experience and I felt so prepared. I have been offered every single ESL job that I have ever applied for. I haven't accepted them all because I can't possibly do that, but you know, the Cambridge Celta really, really prepared me for being a good ESL teacher. So there you have it. Those are the different types of ESL courses you can take. I'm sorry I don't have a lot of details specific, like specific prices, but it's because I didn't take all of these courses and it's quite easy to just Google that yourself. So try that but I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you of course you can ask me any questions that you like and I love to hear experiences from other ESL teachers so let people know what you thought of your course what kind of course did you take what kind of job do you have what tell us all we want to know okay thank you so much for watching be sure to subscribe be sure to subscribe I'm Grace and you're watching Grace Goes Global I think we're talking about what country you should go to next week. So that's going to be a good video as well. So subscribe, thumbs up so other people can see this video, and comment down below because I just like to chat with you guys and your friends.
Até! Bye!